Good morning, it's Wednesday. I'm here in my office and I'm going to try this out again. Uh, just tweaking with this camera, it's like it only records up to a certain amount of time and I did a 12 minute video and it cut it off automatically. So we got to figure that out. Because I want to be able to go longer than 12 minutes if I want on this camera. Otherwise I do short segments and edit it and bring it together. That's a possibility. I just asked my son He's going to ask his uh, audiovisual teacher because he has his email, so he'll be able to email him and find out why we can't do longer videos on the camera itself. So, I'll start it again. It's okay, I'll just do a shorter video. For now, it's okay. I realized something yesterday. You know, after seven and a half months of suffering this affliction, I'm coming around a lot better. Um, I thank God for it. I thank God for the affliction, actually, and I rejoice in affliction in that sense, in spirit. None of us love afflictions. None of us, oh, we, we I love my affliction. No, we don't, because we're human. And it's taxing and it's draining to the physical frame. And uh, some of us go through different deals. Of course, our brother Nelson, Hal, went through a lot more than what we are going through right now. He actually went to repose, but he still had the peace of God. And you could see the peace of God in his videos. I watched the last um, eight before he went to repose. Oh, just so powerful in spirit. He has a higher, he had the higher calling. He understood and realized what he has in Christ. And he was settled and he was at peace no matter what. And this is, this should be our attitude from the heart and understanding that peace of God. It's amazing. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to try to get through this, some more of this uh, article. I'm on page 73, and there's 96 pages here, so going through it step by step. Okay, this part is called Christ Among the Nations. In its realization, the secret of Christ varies according to the administration in which it operates. In this economy, it anticipates in spirit what will take physical form on the earth in the last two eons. We already have the kingdom and the new creation, for which the world still waits. By a similar figure of speech, we already have the presence of Christ, which will make those future e e eras, eras so glorious. But all is in spirit and in expectation. Yet the conciliation may be received and enjoyed by all who believe. Having given the broad outlines of the secret of Christ in its timeless universal aspect, we now have a paragraph devoted to this secret as it especially applies to us in this present administration. The Colossians had not only been lost and were now saved. They had not only been sinners and were now justified but they had been estranged and enemies and were now reconciled. Here we can see the close relation of the secret of the evangel to that of Christ. Both go deeper than sin and deal with offense. They go beneath the outward act to the inward motive. They deal not merely with failure, but with enmity. Enemies in comprehension. I'll read this part and then we'll go into the rest tomorrow. Even, the, even one whose outward behavior and treatment of his fellows is beyond reproach but may be a bitter enemy of God in his heart. Indeed, it is quite possible to be charitable and philanthropic with, his, with a mind that defies and decry, decrees the deity. The, outward of, the attitude of the heart is far more vital than ex, ex, external conduct in our relationship to God especially with reference to the ultimate reconciliation. That is why the Colossians are first characterized as estranged and enemies in their comprehension. Thinking proceeds and prepares for conduct, and our thoughts concerning God must be corrected before our walk can be brought into harmony with Him. Wicked acts arise from this spiritual friction with the Deity, just as sinful deeds do from the lack of vital connection with Him. Men may not be conscious of that, that the enmity is in their comprehension and is against God, for they have no personal acquaintance with Him. 
Rather, it expresses itself in their dissatisfaction with their fate or with the providence of God for their good. They are not thankful and for their evil they blame Him who they feel might have hindered it. Is it not striking that an act of God in legal parlance is a calamity for which he alone can be made responsible. His daily goodness, his continual kindness are matters of course. Man, out of time, out of tune with his creator, does not only fail or fall short, his mind becomes actively opposed to him, and his acts are become wicked. I have not the impression that the Colossians were especially wicked in, in the usual sense of that word. As for instance, the Corinthians, but that their fate, that their state was rather that of the average one who is reconciled to God. The consummation will not only consist in all of God's creatures being at peace with each other. That is only one result of their reconciliation to God. Sin, offense, and wickedness should not be judged and measured by the relations between man and man, but between man and God. It will be found in the judging that many who entirely escape the condemnation of a human judge, because they never seriously infringed upon the laws of society, will be found amongst the most wicked in God's sight, because they were at enmity with him. Justification is by blood, yet reconciliation is through death. Romans 5, 9 through 10. The first has to do with acts and calls for suffering. The second, the second has to do with a condition and demands the death state. We deserve both, to put it properly, but imperfect, imperfectly. Mankind deserves both torment and annihilation. And Christ endured them on our behalf. Sinners will suffer affliction and distress in the judgment. For what they do, and enemies enter the second death for what they are. The judging is concerned only with their acts. Hence it followed is followed by the second death which deals with the deeper aspect. Their vivification at the consummation being a nullification of death deals with what they are and so reconciles them to God. Okay, tomorrow we'll go into holy and flawless and unimpeachable. So there you are. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.